M1 Abrams. The M1 Abrams is an American third-generation main battle tank named for General Creighton Abrams. Highly mobile, designed for modern armored ground warfare, the M1 is well-armed and heavily armored. Notable features include a powerful AGT-1500 multi-fuel turbine engine, sophisticated composite armor, and separate ammunition storage in a blowout compartment for crew safety. Weighing nearly 68 short tons, almost 62 metric tons, it is one of the heaviest main battle tanks in service. The M1 Abrams entered U.S. service in 1980, ultimately replacing the M60 tank. The M1 is the main battle tank of the United States Army and Marine Corps, and is also used by the armies of Egypt, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Australia, and Iraq. Three main versions of the M1 Abrams have been deployed, the M1, M1A1, and M1A2, incorporating improved armament, protection, and electronics. These improvements and other upgrades to in-service tanks have allowed this long-serving vehicle to remain in frontline service. In addition, development of the improved M1A3 version was first publicly disclosed in 2009. Extensive improvements have been implemented to the latest M1A2 SEP3 version. The M1 Abrams was developed during the Cold War as a successor to the cancelled MBT-70. The M1 Abrams contract went to Chrysler Defense and was the first vehicle to adopt Chabam armor. Adaptations before the Persian Gulf War, Operations Desert Shield and Desert Storm, gave the vehicle better firepower and NBC, nuclear, biological and chemical, protection. Being vastly superior to Iraqi tanks, very few M1 tanks were hit by enemy fire. Upgrades after the war improved the tank's weapons sites and fire control unit. The Abrams participated in the 2003 invasion of Iraq, exposing vulnerabilities in urban combat that were addressed with the Tank Urban Survival Kit, TUSK, modifications, armor upgrades, and a gun shield. The Marine Corps sent a company of M1 A1 Abrams tanks to Afghanistan in 2010. The first attempt to replace the M60 tank, which was introduced in 1960, was the MBT-70, developed in partnership with West Germany in the 1960s. The MBT-70 project, which attained testing readiness in 1968, had advanced features such as a height-adjustable air suspension and a very low-profile chassis with the driver located in the turret. The MBT-70 ultimately proved to be too heavy, complex, and expensive. As a result of the imminent failure of this project, the U.S. Army introduced the XM-803, using some technologies from the MBT-70 but removing some of the more troublesome features. This succeeded only in producing an expensive system with capabilities similar to the M60. Congress canceled the MBT-70 in November and XM-803 December 1971, and redistributed the funds to the XM-1 Abrams named after General Creighton Abrams. Prototypes were delivered in 1976 by Chrysler Defense and General Motors armed with a license-built version of the 105mm Royal Ordnance L7 gun along with a Leopard 2 2K prototype for comparison. The turbine-powered Chrysler Defense design was selected for development as the M1. Chrysler had significant experience designing turbine-powered land vehicles going back to the 1950s. In February 1982, General Dynamics Land Systems Division, GDLS, purchased Chrysler Defense. After Chrysler built over 1,000 M1s, a total of 3,273 M1 Abrams tanks were produced during 1979-85 and first entered U.S. Army service in 1980. Production at the government-owned, GDLS-operated Lima Army Tank Plant in Lima, Ohio, was joined by vehicles built at the Detroit Arsenal Tank Plant in Warren. Michigan from 1982 to 1996. Stopped the U.S. Army Laboratory Command, LABCOM, under the supervision of the United States Army Research Laboratory, ARL, was also heavily involved with designing the tank with M1A1 armor resistant shells, M829A2 armor penetrating rounds, and improved weapon range. The M1 was armed with a license built version of the 105mm Royal Ordnance L7 gun. The tank featured the first of its kind Chabam armor. The M1 Abrams was the first to use this advanced armor. It consisted of an arrangement of metal plates, ceramic blocks, and open space. An improved model called the M1 IP was produced briefly in 1984 and contained small upgrades. The M1 IP models were used in the Canadian Army Trophy NATO tank gunnery competition in 1985 and 1987. About 5,000 M1A1 Abrams tanks were produced from 1986 92 and featured the M256 smoothbore cannon developed by Rhein Metal AG of Germany for the Leopard 2, 
improved armor, consisting of depleted uranium and other classified materials, and a CBRN protection system. Production of M1 and M1A1 tanks totaled some 9,000 tanks at a cost of approximately $4.3 million per unit. By 1999, costs for the tank were upwards of a vehicle. In 1990, Project on Government Oversight in a report criticized the M1's high costs and low fuel efficiency in comparison with other tanks of similar power and effectiveness such as the Leopard 2. The report was based on data from U.S. Army sources and the congressional record. As the Abrams entered service in the 1987s, they operated alongside M60A3 within the United States military, and with other NATO tanks in numerous Cold War exercises. These exercises usually took place in Western Europe especially West Germany, but also in some other countries, including South Korea. The exercises were aimed at countering Soviet forces. However, by January 1991, the Berlin Wall had fallen and the Abrams was instead deployed in the Middle East. The Abrams remained untested in combat until the Persian Gulf War in 1991, during Operation Desert Storm. A total of 1,848 M1A1s were deployed to Saudi Arabia to participate in the liberation of Kuwait. The M1A1 was superior to Iraq's Soviet era T-55 and T-62 tanks, as well as T-72 versions imported from the Soviet Union and Poland. Polish officials state no license produced T-72, nicknamed Lion of Babylon, tanks were finished prior to the Iraqi Taji tank plant being destroyed in 1991. The T-72s like most Soviet export designs, lacked night vision systems and then modern rangefinders, though they did have some night fighting tanks with older active infrared systems or floodlights. A total of 23 M1A1S were damaged or destroyed during the war. Of the nine Abrams tanks destroyed, seven were destroyed by friendly fire, and two were purposely destroyed to prevent capture after being damaged. Some others took minor combat damage, with little effect on their operational readiness. Very few M1 tanks were hit by enemy fire and none were destroyed as a direct result of enemy fire, none of which resulted in any fatalities. The M1A1 was capable of making kills at ranges in excess of. This range was crucial in combat against previous generation tanks of Soviet design in Desert Storm, as the effective range of the main gun in the Soviet-Iraqi tanks was less than. This meant Abrams tanks could hit Iraqi tanks before the enemy got in range, a decisive advantage in this kind of combat. In friendly fire incidents, the front armor and four-side turret armor survived direct armor-piercing fin stabilize at discarding sabo, afts, hits from other M1A1S. This was not the case for the side armor of the hull and the rear armor of the turret, as both areas were penetrated in at least two occasions by unintentional strikes by depleted uranium ammunition during the Battle of Norfolk. During operations Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm some M1 IP and M1A1S were modified locally in theater, in the war zone by modification work orders, MWO, with additional rolled homogeneous armor plating welded on the turret front. The M1 can be equipped with mine plow and mine roller attachments. The M1A2 is a further improvement of the M1A1 with a commander's independent thermal viewer, weapon station, position navigation equipment, and a full set of controls and displays linked by a digital data bus. These upgrades also provided the M1A2 with an improved fire control system. The M1A2 System Enhancement Package (SEP) added digital maps, Force 21 Battle Command Brigade and below, FBCB2, Linux Communications System Capability S for commanders, and an improved cooling system to compensate for heat generated by the additional computer systems. The M1A2 SEP also serves as the basis for the M104 Wolverine Heavy Assault Bridge. The M1A2 SEPF2, version 2, added common remotely operated weapon station, CROWS or CROWS 2, support, color displays, better interfaces, a new operating system, better front and side armor, and an upgraded transmission for better durability. Further upgrades included depleted uranium armor for all variants, a system overhaul that returns all A1S to like new condition, M1A1 name, a digital enhancement package for the A1, M1A1D and a commonality program to standardize parts between the U.S. Army and the Marine Corps, M1A1HC. The development for the improved M1A3 variant has been known since 2009.
Further combat was seen during 2003 when U.S. forces invaded Iraq and deposed Ba'athist Iraqi leader Saddam Hussein in the Iraq War's Operation Iraqi Freedom. As of March 2005, approximately 80 Abrams tanks were forced out of action by enemy attacks. 63 tanks were restored, while 17 were damaged beyond repair. Three of them at the beginning 2003. One achievement of the M1A1S was the destruction of seven T-72s in a point-blank skirmish, less than, near Mamoudia, about south of Baghdad, with no American losses. In addition to the Abrams's heavy armament, some crews were also issued M136 AT4 shoulder-fired anti-tank weapons under the assumption that they might have to engage heavy armor in tight urban areas where the main gun could not be brought to bear. Following lessons learned in Desert Storm, the Abrams and many other U.S. combat vehicles used in the conflict were fitted with combat identification panels to reduce friendly fire incidents. These were fitted on the sides and rear of the turret, with flat panels equipped with a four-cornered box image on either side of the turret front. Some Abrams tanks were also fitted with a secondary storage bin on the back of the existing bustle rack on the rear of the turret, referred to as a bustle rack extension, to enable the crew to carry more supplies and personal belongings. Several Abrams tanks that were irrecoverable due to loss of mobility or other circumstances were destroyed by friendly forces, usually by other Abrams tanks, to prevent their capture. Some Abrams tanks were disabled by Iraqi infantrymen in ambushes during the invasion. Some troops employed short-range anti-tank rockets and fired at the tracks, rear and top. Other tanks were put out of action by engine fires when flammable fuel stored externally in turret racks was hit by small arms fire and spilled into the engine compartment. A majority of Abrams tanks damaged in post-invasion Iraq were by improvised explosive devices IEDs. By December 2006 more than 530 Abrams tanks had been shipped back to the U.S. for repair. Due to the vulnerability of tanks in urban combat, the Tank Urban Survival Kit, TUSK, was issued to some M1 Abrams tanks. It added protection in the rear and side of the tank to improve fighting ability in urban environments. In May 2008, it was reported that an American M1 tank had also been damaged in Iraq by insurgent fire of a Soviet-made RPG-29 Vampire, which uses a tandem charge high-explosive anti-tank warhead to penetrate explosive reactive armor, ERA, as well as composite armor behind it. The U.S. considered the RPG-29 threat to American armor high and refused to allow the newly formed Iraqi army to buy it, fearing that it would fall into the insurgents' hands. Between 2010 and 2012 the U.S. supplied 140 refurbished M1A1 Abrams tanks to Iraq. In mid-2014, they saw action when the Islamic State of Iraq and the Levant launched the June 2014 Northern Iraq Offensive. During three months, about one-third of the Iraqi army's M1 tanks had been damaged or destroyed by Israel and some were captured by opposing forces. By December 2014, the Iraqi army only had about 40 operational Abrams left. That month. The U.S. Department of State approved the sale of another 175 Abrams to Iraq. Iranian-backed Iraqi Shiite Qatayb Hezbollah, Hezbollah brigades, reported to operate M1 Abrams, and released publicity showing the tanks being transported by trucks to take part in the Battle of Mosul. It is not known whether the tanks were captured from ISIS, seized from Iraq's military, or handed over. One Iraqi-operated Abrams has been nicknamed the Beast after it became the lone working tank when taking back the town of Hid in April 2016, destroying enemy fighting positions and item placements. In October 2017, Abrams were used by the Iraqi Security Forces, ISF, and the Popular Mobilization Forces, also called al hashd al-Sabi, in assaults against Kurdistan regional government Peshmerga in the town of Altun Kupri, also called Prud. It was claimed by Kurdish commanders that at least one Abrams was destroyed by the Peshmerga. Tanks may have limited utility in Afghanistan due to the mountainous terrain, although Canada and Denmark have deployed Leopard 1 and 2 MBTs that have been specially modified to operate in the relatively flat and arid conditions of southwestern Afghanistan. In late 2010, at the request of Regional Command Southwest, the U.S. Marine Corps deployed a small detachment of 14 M1A1 Abrams tanks from Delta Company. 1st Tank Battalion, 1st Marine Division, forward, to southern Afghanistan in support of operations in Helmand and Kandahar provinces. After the start of the Saudi Arabian intervention in Yemen during the 2015 Yemeni Civil War, Saudi Arabian M1A2 MBTs were deployed near the Saudi Arabian-Yemeni border. In August 2016, 
the U.S. approved a deal to sell up to 153 more Abrams tanks to Saudi Arabia, including 20 battle damage replacements, suggesting that some Saudi Arabian Abrams had been destroyed or severely damaged in combat in Yemen. The U.S. Army planned to end production at the Lima Army tank plant from 2013 to 2016 in an effort to save over $1 billion, it would be restarted in 2017 to upgrade existing tanks. General Dynamics Land Systems, GDLS, which operates the factory, opposed the move, arguing that suspension of operations would increase long-term costs and reduce flexibility. Specifically, GDLS estimated that closing the plant would cost $380 million and restarting production would cost $1.3 billion. By August 2013, Congress had allocated $181 million for buying parts and upgrading Abrams systems to mitigate industrial base risks and sustain development and production capability. Congress and General Dynamics were criticized for redirecting money to keep production lines open and accused of forcing the Army to buy tanks it didn't need. General Dynamics asserted that a four-year shutdown would cost $1.10 to $1.6 billion to reopen the line, depending on the length of the shutdown, whether machinery would be kept operating, and whether the plant's components would be completely removed. They contended that the move was to upgrade Army National Guard units to expand a pure fleet and maintain production of identified irreplaceable subcomponents. A prolonged shutdown could cause their makers to lose their ability to produce them and foreign tank sales were not guaranteed to keep production lines open. There is still risk of production gaps even with production extended through 2015, with funds awarded before recapitalization is needed. Budgetary pressures may push planned new upgrades for the Abrams from 2017 to 2019. In December 2014, Congress again allocated $120 million, against the wishes of the Army. For Abrams upgrades including improving gas mileage by integrating an auxiliary power unit to decrease idle time fuel consumption and upgrading the tank's sights and sensors. The tracked M8 armored gun system was conceived as a possible supplement for the Abrams and U.S. service for low-intensity conflict in the early 1990s. Prototypes were made but the program was cancelled. The 8-wheeled M1128 mobile gun system was designed to supplement the Abrams and U.S. service for low-intensity conflicts. It has been introduced into service and serves with striker brigades. The U.S. Army's Future Combat Systems XM-1202 Mounted Combat System was to replace the Abrams in U.S. service and was in development when funding for the program was cut from the DoD's budget. Engineering Change Proposal 1 is a two-part upgrade process. ICP-1A adds space, weight, and power improvements and active protection against improvised explosive devices. Nine ICP-1A prototypes have been produced as of October 2014. ICP-1B, which will begin development in 2015, may include sensor upgrades and the convergence of several tank round capabilities into a multi-purpose round. The M1A2 Septus Abrams and a modernized M1 Abrams were included in the Ground Combat Vehicle, GCB, Analysis of Alternatives, AOA. Vehicles included in the OA were determined to be inferior to the planned GCB. The U.S. Army Vice Chief of Staff Gen. Peter Chiarelli commended the M1 Abrams program and recommended a similar approach for the GCB program. The ground combat vehicle family of vehicles was the planned successor to the M1 as well as many other U.S. Army vehicles. However, the Army anticipates that the remaining M1A1 fleet will remain in U.S. service until at least 2021, and the M1A2 to be on 2050. The M1A3 Abrams was in the early design period with the U.S. Army in 2009. At that time, the service was seeking a lighter tank version with the same protection as current versions. It aimed to build prototypes by 2014 and begin fielding the first combat-ready M1A3S by 2017. In March 2017, it was reported that the new version, the M1A2 SEP V4, is to begin testing in 2021. Additionally an all-new version for the U.S. Army has been in planning and development for several years. Earlier U.S. military vehicles, used from World War I through the Vietnam War, used a scheme of olive drab, often with large white stars. Prototypes, early production M1, 105mm gun, and M1 IP models switched to a flat forest green paint scheme. The large white insignia stars have also transitioned to a much smaller black markings. Some units painted their M1S with the older Mobility Equipment Research and Design Command, MURG, four-color paint scheme but the turn-in requirements for these tanks required repainting them to overall forest green. Therefore, 
Even though a large number of the base model M1s wear a camouflaged in the field, few or none exist today. M1A1S came from the factory with the NATO 3 color camouflage black slash med green slash dark brown chemical agent resistant coating, CARC, paint jobs. Today M1A1S are given the NATO 3 color paint job during rebuilds. M1S and M1A1S deployed to Operation Desert Storm were hastily painted desert tan. Some, but not all, of these tanks were repainted to their authorized paint scheme. M1A2S built for Middle Eastern countries were painted in desert tan. Replacement parts, road wheels, armor skirt panels, drive sprockets, etc., are painted olive green, which can sometimes lead to vehicles with a patchwork off green and desert tan parts. Australian M1A1S were desert tan when delivered but have undergone a transition to the Australian Army Vehicle Standard Disruptive Pattern Camouflage, a scheme that consists of black, olive drab, and brown. The U.S. Army can equip its Abrams tanks with the Saab Barracuda Camouflage System, which provides concealment against visual, infrared, thermal infrared, and broadband radar detection. The turret is fitted with two six-barreled smoke grenade launchers, USMC M1A1S use an eight-barrel version. These can create a thick smoke that blocks spot vision and thermal imaging. The engine is also equipped with a smoke generator that is triggered by the driver. When activated, fuel is sprayed into the hot turbine exhaust, creating the thick smoke. However, due to the change from diesel as a primary fuel to the use of JP-8, this system is disabled on most Abrams tanks today because of a slightly elevated risk of fire damage to the engine compartment. In July 1973, representatives from Chrysler and General Motors traveled to the United Kingdom, and were escorted by personnel from the Ballistic Research Laboratory and XM1 Project Manager Major General Robert J. Baer to witness the progress of British-developed Chobham armor. They observed the manufacturing processes required for the production of Chobham armor which was an arrangement of metal plates ceramic blocks and open space, and saw a proposed design for a new British vehicle utilizing it. Heat and Sabo round will make it through the beginning layers off armor but won't make it to the crew compartment. Ceramics have an ability to absorb a lot of heat, and take physical blows. The remaining hot gases and metal shrapnel spread out or settle in empty air pockets. Both contractors re-evaluated their proposed armor configuration space adupa on the newly obtained data. This led to major changes in the General Motors XM1. The most prominent of which is the turret front changing from vertical to sloped armor. The Chrysler XM1 on the other hand retained its basic shape although a number of changes were made. The Ballistic Research Laboratory had to develop new armor combinations in order to accommodate the changes made by the contractors. For the base model M1 Abrams, Stephen J. Zaloga gives a frontal armor estimate of 350 mm versus armor piercing fin stabilized discarding sabot, aphts and 700 MMBS High Explosive Anti-Tank Warhead, HE-80, in M1 Abrams Main Battle Tank 1982-1992-1993. In M1 Abrams vs. T-72 Ural, 2009, he uses Soviet estimates of 470mm vs. Aphts and 650mm vs. Heat for the base model Abrams. He also gives the Soviet estimates for the M1A1, 600mm vs. Aphts and 700 mm versus heat. Armor protection was improved by implementing a new special armor incorporating depleted uranium and other undisclosed materials and layouts. This was introduced into the M1A1 production starting October 1988. This new armor increased effective armor particularly against kinetic energy rounds viewed at the expense of adding considerable weight to the tank, as depleted uranium is 1.7 times more dense than lead. The first M1A1 tanks to receive this upgrade were a tanks stationed in Germany. U.S.-based tank battalions participating in Operation Desert Storm received an emergency program to upgrade their tanks with depleted uranium armor immediately before the onset of the campaign. M1A2 tanks uniformly incorporate depleted uranium armor, and all M1A1 tanks in active service have been upgraded to this standard as well. This variant was designated as the M1A1 HA, HA for heavy armor. For the M1A1 HA, Zaloka gives a frontal armor estimate of 600 mm versus aphts and 1,300 mm versus heat in M1 Abrams main battle tank 1982-1992, nearly double the original protection of the Abrams. In M1 Abrams versus T-72 Ural, he uses different estimates of 600 mm versus aphts and 700 mm versus heat fourth front hull and 800 mm versus aphts and 1300 mm versus heat for the front of the turret. 
The protection of M1A2 SEP is a frontal turret armor estimate of 940 to 960 mmbs aft and 1320 to 1620 versus heat. Glassy estimate of 560 to 590 mm versus aft and 510 to 1050 versus heat. And lower front hull estimate of 580 to 650 mm versus aft and 800 to 970 versus heat. The Abrams may also be fitted with reactive armor over the track skirts if needed, such as the tank urban survival kit, and slat armor over the rear of the tank and rear fuel cells to protect against ATGMs. Protection against spalling is provided by a Kevlar liner. The tank has a hail on firefighting system to automatically extinguish fires in the crew compartment. The engine compartment has a firefighting system that is engaged by pulling a T handle located on the left side of the hull. The halon gas can be dangerous to the crew. However, the toxicity of halon 1301 gas at 7% concentration is much less than the combustion products produced by fire in the crew compartment, and CO2 dump would be lethal to the crew. The crew compartment also contains small handheld fire extinguishers. Fuel and ammunition are stored in armored compartments with blowout panels to protect the crew from the risk of the tank's own ammunition cooking off, exploding, if the tank is damaged. The main gun's ammunition is stored in the rear section of the turret, with blast doors that open under power by sliding sideways only to remove the round for firing, then automatically close. The Tank Urban Survival Kit, TUSK, is a series of improvements to the M1 Abrams intended to improve fighting ability in urban environments. Historically, urban and other close battlefields have been poor places for tanks to fight. A tank's front armor is much stronger than that on the sides, top, or rear. In an urban environment, attacks can come from any direction, and attackers can get close enough to reliably hit weak points in the tank's armor or gain sufficient elevation to hit the top armor. Armor upgrades include reactive armor on the sides of the tank and slat armor, similar to that on the striker, on the rear to protect against rocket propellant grenades and other shaped charge warheads. A transparent armor gun shield and a thermal sight system are added to the loader's top-mounted M240B 7.62mm machine gun, and a Kongsberg grip in remote weapon turret carrying a .50 caliber machine gun, again similar to that used on a striker, is in place of the tank commander's original .50 caliber machine gun mount, wherein the commander had to expose himself to fire the weapon manually. An exterior telephone allows supporting infantry to communicate with the tank commander. The TOSC system is a field installable kit that allows tanks to be upgraded without needing to be recalled to a maintenance depot. While the reactive armor may not be needed in most situations, like those present in maneuver warfare, items like the rear slat armor, loader's gun shield, infantry phone, which saw use on Marine Corps M1A1S as early as 2003, and Kongsberg remote weapons station for the .50 and caliber machine gun will be added to the entire M1A2 fleet over time. On August 29, 2006, General Dynamics Land Systems received a U.S. Army order for 505 tank urban survivability kits, TUSK, for Abrams' main battle tanks supporting operations in Iraq, under a $45 million U.S. dollar contract. Deliveries were expected to be completed by April 2009. Under a separate order, the U.S. Army awarded General Dynamics Armament and Technical Products, DUP. 30 million U.S. dollars to produce reactive armor kits to equip M1A2S. The reactive tiles for the M1 will be locally produced at DOPS Burlington Technology Center. Tiles will be produced at the company's reactive armor facility in Stone County Operations, McHenry, Mississippi. On December 8, 2006, the U.S. Army added counter improvised explosive device enhancements to the M1A1 and M1A2 Tusk, awarding GDLS $11.3 million contract part of the $59 million package mentioned above. In December, GDLS also received an order, amounting to around 40% of a $48 million U.S. dollars order, for loaders' thermal weapon sites being part of the Tusk system improvements for the M1A1 and M1A2 Abrams tanks. In addition to the armor, some Abrams tanks are equipped with a soft kill active protection system, the in vlq 6 missile countermeasure device, MCD that can impede the function of guidance systems of some semi-active control line of sight, SACLOS, wire and radio-guided anti-tank missiles, such as the Russian 9K114 term, and infrared homing missiles. The MCD works by emitting a massive, condensed infrared signal to confuse the infrared homing seeker of an anti-tank guided missile, 
ATGM. However, the drawback to the system is that the ATGM is not destroyed, it is merely directed away from its intended target, leaving the missile to detonate elsewhere. This device is mounted on the turret roof in front of the loader's hatch, and can lead some people to mistake Abrams tanks fitted with these devices for the M1A2 version, since the commander's independent thermal viewer on the ladder is mounted in the same place, though the MCD is box-shaped and fixed in place as opposed to cylindrical and rotating like the SIT. In 2016, the U.S. Army and Marine Corps began testing out the Israeli Trophy Active Protection System to protect their Abrams tanks from modern RPG and in threats by either jamming with ATGMs, or firing small rounds to deflect incoming projectiles. The Army plans to field a brigade of over 80 tanks equipped with Trophy to Europe in 2020. It is planned for up to 261 Abrams to be upgraded with the system, enough for four brigades. In June 2018, the Army awarded Leonardo DRS, American partner to Trophy's designer Raphael, a $193 million contract to deliver the system in support of M1 Abrams' immediate operational requirements. The main armament of the original model M1 was the M68A1 105mm rifled tank gun firing a variety of high-explosive anti-tank, high-explosive, white phosphorus and an anti-personnel, multiple flechet, round. This gun used a license-made tube of the British Royal Ordnance L7 gun together with the vertical sliding breech block and other parts of the American T254E2 prototype gun. However, it proved to be inadequate. A cannon with lethality beyond the range was needed to combat newer armor technologies. To attain that lethality, the projectile diameter needed to be increased. The main armament of the M1A1 and M1A2 is the M256A1 120mm smoothbore gun, designed by Rhein Metal AG of Germany, manufactured under license in the U.S. by Waterfleet Arsenal New York. The M256A1 is a variant of the Rheinmetall 120mm length 44 gun carried on the German Leopard 2 on all variants up to the Leopard 2A5. Leopard 2A6 replaced the L-44 barrel with a longer L-55. The M256A1 fires a variety of rounds. The M829A2 Aft's round was developed specifically to address the improved protection of the Russian T-72. T-80U or T-90 main battle tank equipped with contact 5 explosive reactive armor. Later, the M829A3 Aft's round was introduced to improve its effectiveness against next-generation ERA-equipped tanks. As a counter to that, the Russian army introduced Reliked, the most modern Russian ERA, which is claimed to be twice as effective as contact 5. Development of the M829 series is continuing with the M829A4 currently entering production. The Abrams also fires high explosive anti tank warhead shaped charge rounds such as the M830, the latest version of which, M830A1, incorporates a sophisticated multi mode electronic sensing fuse and more fragmentation, which allows it to be used effectively against armored vehicles, personnel, and low flying aircraft. The Abrams uses a manual loader. The fourth tank crew member on the Abrams also provides additional support for maintenance, observation post slash listening post, op slash LP, operations, and other tasks. The new M1028 120mm anti-personnel canister cartridge was brought into service early for use in the aftermath of the 2003 invasion of Iraq. It contains 1,098 tungsten balls which spread from the muzzle to produce a shotgun effect lethal out to. The tungsten balls can be used to clear enemy dismounts, break up hasty ambush sites in urban areas, clear defiles, stop infantry attacks and counterattacks and support friendly infantry assaults by providing covering fire. The canister round is also a highly effective breaching round and can level cinder block walls and knock man-sized holes in reinforced concrete walls for infantry raids at distances up to. Also in use is the M908 obstacle reduction round. It is designed to destroy obstacles and barriers. The round is a modified M830A1 with the front fuse replaced by a steel nose to penetrate into the obstacle before detonation. The U.S. Army Research Laboratory, ARL, conducted a thermal analysis of the M256 from 2002 to 2003 to evaluate the potential of using a hybrid barrel system that would allow for multiple weapon systems such as the MX1111 mid range munition. Airburst rounds, or XM1147. The test concluded that mesh density, number of elements per unit area, impacts accuracy of the M256, and specific densities would be needed for each weapon system. 
Vietnam, the Army is developing a new round to replace the M830-M830A1, M1028, and M908. Called the Advanced Multipurpose, AMP, round, it will have point detonation, delay, and airburst modes through an ammunition data link and a multi-mode, programmable fuse in a single munition. Having one round that does the job of four would simplify logistics and be able to be used on a variety of targets. The AMP is to be effective against bunkers, infantry, light armor, and obstacles out to 500 meters, and will be able to breach reinforced concrete walls and defeat ATGM teams from 500 to 2,000 meters. Orbital ATK was awarded a contract to begin the first phase of development for the AMP XM1147 high-explosive multipurpose with tracer cartridge in October 2015. In addition to these, the XM1111 mid-range munition chemical energy, was also in development. The XM1111 was a guided munition using a dual-mode secret hat combined imaging infrared and semi-active laser guidance. The MRMCE was selected over the competing MRMK which used the rocket-assisted Kinetis Energy Penetrator. The CE variant was chosen due to its better effects against secondary targets, providing a more versatile weapon. The Army hoped to achieve IOC with the XM1111 by 2013. However, the midrange munition was cancelled in 2009 along with future combat systems. The Abrams tank has three machine guns, with an optional fourth. The Abrams is equipped with a ballistic fire control computer that uses user and system supplied data from a variety of sources to compute, display, and incorporate the three components of a ballistic solution, lead angle, ammunition type, and range to the target, to accurately fire the main gun. These three components are determined using a laser rangefinder, crosswind sensor, a pendulum static can sensor, data concerning performance and flight characteristics of each specific type of round, tank-specific foresight alignment data, ammunition temperature, air temperature, barometric pressure, a muzzle reference system, misses, that determines and compensates for barrel drop at the muzzle due to gravitational pull and barrel heating due to firing or sunlight, and target speed determined by tracking rate tachometers in the gunner's or commander's controls handles. All of these factors are computed into a ballistic solution and updated 30 times per second. The updated solution is displayed in the gunner's or tank commander's field of view in the form of a reticle in both day and thermal modes. The ballistic computer manipulates the turret and a complex arrangement of mirrors so that all one has to do is keep the reticle on the target and fire to achieve a hit. Proper lead and gun tube elevation are applied to the turret by the computer, greatly simplifying the job of the gunner. The fire control system uses this data to compute a firing solution for the gunner. The ballistic solution generated ensures a hit percentage greater than 95% at nominal ranges. Either the commander or gunner can fire the main gun. Additionally, the commander's independent thermal viewer, CITV, on the M1A2 can be used to locate targets and pass them on for the gunner to engage while the commander scans for new targets. In the event of a malfunction or damage to the primary sight system, the main and coaxial weapons can be manually aimed using a telescopic scope or sighted to the main gun known as the gunner's auxiliary sight, GAS. The gas has two interchangeable reticles, one for high-explosive anti-tank warhead and PAT multipurpose anti-tank, rounds and one for EFSTs and staff, smart target activated fire and forget, ammunition. Turret traverse and main gun elevation can be accomplished with manual handles and cranks in the event of a fire control system or hydraulic system failure. The commander's M2 HB.50 caliber machine gun on the M1 and M1A1 is aimed by a 3 times magnification sight incorporated into the commander's weapon station CWS while the M1A2 uses either the machine gun's own iron sights, or a remote aiming system such as the Crow's system when used as part of the Tusk Tank Urban Survival Kit. The Loader's M240 machine gun is aimed either with the built-in iron sights or with the thermal scope mounted on the machine gun. In late 2017, the 400 USMC M1A1 Abrams will be upgraded with better and longer range sights on the Abrams Integrated Display and Targeting System, ADATS replacing the black and white camera view with a color one and adding day-slash-night thermal sights, simplified handling with a single set of controls, and a slew to Q button that repositions the turret with a single command. Preliminary testing showed the upgrade's reduced target engagement time from 6 seconds to 3 by allowing the commander and gunner to work more closely and collaborate better on target acquisition. The M1 Abrams's powertrain consists of a Honeywell AGT-1500, originally made by Lycoming, 
multi-fuel gas turbine capable of at 3,000 revolutions per minute and at 1,000 revolutions per minute, and a 6-speed, 4-forward, 2-reverse, Allison X1103 B hydrokinetic automatic transmission, giving it a governed top speed of unpaved roads, and cross-country. With the engine governor removed, speeds of around are possible on an improved surface, however, damage to the drivetrain, especially to the tracks, and an increased risk of injuries to the crew can occur at speeds above. The tank was built around this engine and it is multi-fuel capable, meaning that it can be powered with diesel, kerosene, any grade of motor gasoline, and jet fuel, such as JP4 or JP8. For logistical reasons, JP8 is the U.S. military's universal fuel powering both aircraft and vehicle fleets. On the other hand, Australian M1A1 AIMSA burn diesel fuel, since the use of JP8 is less common in the Australian Army. The gas turbine propulsion system has proven quite reliable in practice and combat, but its high fuel consumption is a serious logistic issue. Starting up the turbine alone consumes nearly a fuel. The engine burns more than per mile, per hour, when traveling cross country and per hour when idle. The high speed, high temperature jet blast emitted from the rear of M1 Abrams tanks makes it difficult for the infantry to proceed shadowing the tank in urban combat. The turbine is very quiet when compared to diesel engines of similar power output and produces a significantly different sound from a contemporary diesel tank engine, reducing the audible distance of the sound, thus earning the Abrams the nickname Whispering Death during its first reforger exercise. Honeywell was developing another gas turbine engine with General Electric for the XM2001 Crusader program that was to be a replacement for the Abrams Act 1500 engine. The new LV105 engine was lighter and smaller, 43% fewer parts, with rapid acceleration, quieter running, and no visible exhaust. It also featured a 33% reduction in fuel consumption, 50% less when idle, and near drop in replacement. The Abrams Crusader Common Engine Program was helped when the Crusader Program was cancelled, however, Phase 2 of Army's PROS, Partnership for Reduced ONS Costs, Engine, program called for further development of the LV-105 and replacement of the current AGT-1500 engine. General Dynamics has been working on a drop-in diesel engine to replace the gas turbine engine. It is smaller than the turbine, 14% cheaper to operate per mil, and has a four-fan cooling system which is to greatly reduce the tank's heat signature. General Dynamics is offering the Tognum America-12 V883 diesel engine with new Deal 570P3 tracks. The engine represents advancements in diesel engine design since the Abrams was first designed, including a common rail fuel injector system where fuel is pressurized and atomized in the cylinder rather than mechanically sprayed. It also has greater torque, an altered nuclear, biological, and chemical protection system that operates independently of the engine, uses less fuel while idle, is quieter, and gives off significantly less heat and pollutants. Incorporating the diesel engine into the Abrams would decrease the operating cost of an armored brigade combat team by 14% per mile, increase its operating range from 205 miles to 300 plus miles, and use half the amount of fuel on a combat day than the turbine E engine. The tracks are a version of the Leopard 2's tracks with different rubber pads and a larger center guide. The improved engine and tracks are not part of an Army upgrade program, but may be included in a near term engineering change proposal. ECP phase. Using a high-power density Wankel rotary engine modified to use diesel and military-grade jet fuel, the Army's Tardic developed an auxiliary power unit designed to fit into the M1 Abrams, replacing an existing battery pack that weighs about. The new APU will also be more fuel-efficient than the tank's main engine. Testing of the first APUs began in 2009. Although the M1 tank is not designed to carry riders easily. Provisions exist for the Abrams to transport troops and tank decent with the turret stabilization device switched off. A battle-equipped infantry squad may ride on the rear of the tank, behind the turret. The soldiers can use ropes and equipment straps to provide handholds and snap links to secure themselves. If and when enemy contact is made, the tank conceals itself allowing the infantry to dismount. Strategic mobility is the ability of the tanks of an armed force to arrive in a timely, cost-effective, and synchronized fashion. The Abrams can be carried by a C5 Galaxy or a C17 Globemaster III. The limited capacity, two combat ready in a C5, one combat ready tank in a C17, caused serious logistical problems when deploying the tanks for the first Persian Gulf War, 
though there was enough time for 1,848 tanks to be transported by ship. Marines transport their Marine Air Ground Task Force, MAGTF, attached Abrams tanks by combat ship. A WASP-class landing helicopter dock, LHD, typically carries a platoon of four to five tanks attached to the deployed Marine Expeditionary Unit, which are then amphibiously transported to shore by landing craft air cushion, LCAC, at one combat-ready tank per landing craft. The Abrams is also transportable by truck, namely the M1070 Heavy Equipment Transporter, HET. The HET can operate on highways, secondary roads, and cross-country. The HET accommodates the four tank crew members. The first instance of the Abrams being airlifted directly into a battlefield occurred in October 1993. Following the Battle of Mogadishu, 18 M1 tanks were airlifted BC-5 aircraft to Somalia from Hunter Army Airfield, Georgia. It is uncertain whether it will receive U.S. approval. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.